Okay, now that you have seen what a precunior tapping head can do on the drill press, let's take one apart and see how it works. Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 31 of my What Makes It Work series. Be sure and go back and watch the other 30 if this type of thing interests you. Well, let's take this thing apart and see exactly how it works. There'll be a follow-up video where I service this, and there'll be some similarities and some duplication, but you already saw this uh, being operated is allow you to safely tap holes and they made these in many different sizes this is one of the smaller if not the smallest that's a 1032 tap but it allows you to tap very straight very fast and it is automatic reversing and it uh, is double the speed in reverse of what it is in forward speed it could be used with left hand taps if you run the machine uh, counterclockwise very interesting uh, device. They allowed great uh, uh, productivity and at the end of the video I'll put some of the patent drawings by Mr. Procunior. So be sure and check those out as well. Well let's take this thing apart. First of all I'll remove the tap just for convenience sake and the rod here that keeps the whole device from spinning around. These tapping attachments are quite expensive and even the different collets to hold different size taps are $30 or $35 each. So inside of the threaded spindle nose here there is a collet. And here it is, and they're still available, although mine is an older one, and it's over $700 in the Travers catalog. It's about 50 bucks cheaper in the McMaster car catalog, but you can also buy them used, probably for around $200. This tapping attachment is available with a half inch shank such as this, but also available with Morse taper shanks. There's an oil hole right there. And notice now that there really is no direct connection between the collet here and the shank. So it's going to be friction drive and the, the spindle here I may not be using the correct word, moves in and out. So when you are tapping and pushing down, it engages and starts revolving, but strictly by friction. By letting up the feed on your drill press, rotation immediately stops, and if you reverse the, uh, the feed on the drill press with your, uh, your hand uh, lever, this will pull down just a little bit, and that's when it goes into reverse. Notice now as I turn this that my thumb is turning the other way. That's reverse. All the way in is now direct drive. There is no reduction in speed this way. There is an increase in speed by two times when we back it out. I already said that I know and that is accomplished by a uh, planetary gear system. Let's take it apart. These attachments are very easy to take apart and service. And there is the ring gear. And there is a bearing here, and possibly two bearings. Remember that the uh, patent drawing is not always exactly the way the finished product uh, is, but there's also a thrust bearing in here. 
Now we don't want any oil in here at all. So when you oil this right here, the oil drips on the outside of the cone and this does nothing on the outside. That's just a machine surface and it'll sling the oil out, out of the way so that it doesn't get on the uh, friction cone here or the inner surface and the oil will then serve its purpose on the bearings but it will drip down to the bottom. There's a little felt uh, ring around there that will absorb some of that oil and any excess will come out of the weep hole. These three bolts hold in uh, planetary gears. Now I will remove these two little screws, or about a number three screw. Now there's a cross pin in there that we need to remove. And then this friction piece will be remo removable and replaceable if it's bad or worn. This is a homemade piece of bent wire. So that's all that is to kind of get that pin out of there. Can you see the pin now? That's cork on a die cast hub. Now all those two little screws do that I took out is prevent this cross pin from moving one way or another. And that's the hole for the pin. Looking inside there is a spring along with a little bit of a leather or rubber washer there I'm not sure. Don't lose any of these parts. And then in there is the other uh, friction cone for backing it out. So let's review, review what that cone does. By the way, this bearing does not feel or sound too good and probably should be replaced, but yet for as little as I use it, it, it really isn't going to matter. But notice here that the input shaft that goes into the drill press truck is not continuous. It does not go all the way through. It is totally separate from this shaft. I already mentioned that. And this is the shaft that actually drives the tap and now it can easily be taken out. So let me take the shaft out. Hardened and ground shaft. There's that cross hole that I showed you. And that allows this other part this other cone here along with sun gear and another bearing and another bronze bushing. And there you can see yet another bushing down there where my finger is wiggling. And there are the planetary gears held of course and I'm not going to take them out in place by these bolts that I just talked about. So rather simple but incredibly ingenious construction. And by the way, that patent applied for in 1929, approved in 1930, just in time for the Depression. So I bet his heart was broken when he didn't sell many of these, I'm deducing that, until the war started raging and then he must have sold a ton of these and got rich. All right, I've reassembled the lower part here. The spring is in place. Perhaps you can see it a little bit in there. And I put the pin in there just loosely to illustrate what is happening now. First of all, the spring pushes that lower a cup away from the cones so that there is a bit of a neutral position in the thing. And of course, this would be in place like this. So pushing down on the feed lever forces this cone up into the uh, interior of this cup. Okay, I have to, as I reassemble this, put the, this little shaft into the bearing there. So that's why I'm fumbling a little bit. There it's in place. So when, again, when we feed down on the feed lever of the drill press, it forces that cone up in there and by a friction drive, 
the entire thing revolves. Now when you relax your feet a little bit, it'll drop out just a little bit like that and will be in the neutral position. It will, the tap will not be uh, moving into the work or out of the work. So you can stop your tapping at any moment during that cycle. And then similarly, as you uh, back out your feed lever on the drill press, the cup here goes into the lower part of the friction cone and drives, but of course now it's going to be in reverse. You used to see this type of cone drive even on lawnmowers. It was pretty popular. I had an old Alice Chalmers that had that. It was rather troublesome and got overheated and all that and was subject to wear. Much larger than this, but it was, that's a common way of reversing a shaft. Alright, I just went through the tedious effort of counting the teeth on the ring gear and there's 48. And I counted the teeth on the sun gear and there's 24. What is the significance of that? Well, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. And that is why, in reverse, it backs out twice as fast for productivity's sake as it uh, does to, to go uh, in. So it's quite clever, and that, of course, is in conjunction with the planetary gears there as well. Let's take a look at this again. And now the spring goes on there, and the purpose of the spring, it has that little nib on there that gets caught by the screws when they come through. The screws are not in there right now. And the purpose of that spring, of course, is to keep it separated just a little bit to find that neutral position. I think I already said that, but maybe it bears repeating. And just a review on the lubrication, again, when that's assembled, you're squirting just a little bit of 20 weight oil in there, and it comes out, you can see where, right in there, and drips down and gets slung out, again, by centrifugal force, and most of it ends up down at the bottom, and gets into the, we don't want any in there, that'll have to be cleaned up and it gets on the gears. Now I will put a little grease on those too on final assembly. And that lubricates that lower bearing and those bushings, those bronze bushings. And turn it just a little bit and you can see that the gears engage but of course we still have the ring gear right here. And you'll feel that click into place. I don't have all the parts in there. I'm just illustrating. I really wish I had an old one of these that I could make a cutout of so you could see some of what's happening because in order to fully make this thing work I have to put it back together and then you can't see really what's happening with the planetary gears, the increase in speed and the reversing which is really the most interesting part. The, the forward drive is not particularly interesting, it's, it's just obvious, but once that is assembled, all of that, of course, disappears. I hope that made some sense to you. Now, in putting it back together, this ring gear has to engage with those planetary gears and the little oiler right over the trademark here. I did put, I always put little index marks on anything I take apart. I just think that's a good practice. There, they, they meshed. The gears mesh, that is. It comes together and I'll put these screws back in off camera. These tapping heads can be used in the horizontal position. There's a little bit of change in the oilers, I believe, so that the oil gets uh, where it needs to be, but probably can be used the way it is. I'm, I'm not real sure on that. Again, when the tap is presented to the hole and pushed up, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. 
you relax the feet a little bit and nothing happens and you pull the other way to back the tap out and it reverses it and doubles the speed through the planetary system. Let me put it back in the drill press real quickly and, and do a slow motion of, of it going in and out and, and stopping. Just interesting to see. You can tap blind holes with these too. Of course with the appropriate tap. I am using a gun tap, a machine tap, 1024. Was that clear as mud? Safety Nazis will insist that you wire tie the stop rod to the column of the drill press and it's probably a good practice. Now watch me tap and stop and stall and reverse and retap a hole with great ease. Uh, I'm zoomed in here. I'll do it again from a distance. I know you won't be able to hear me. This drill press is as noisy as an old Ford V8. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a pecunier tapping head works. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and be sure and watch a follow-up video where I service this unit, but there will be some duplication in the material. So long for now.